Hey boys, girls, and in-betweens, you may be wondering, Benny, where have you been for the last, like, month? Why have you been MIA, off the map? You're completely, like, gone. Um, so, I'm sorry about that. I moved to Michigan recently, and life has been crazy hectic. In addition to that craziness, uh, I broke my foot, <laughs> as you can see. So, that's been really limiting on what I can do and how quickly I can get things done. I recorded a couple videos, uh, didn't have time to edit them, and wasn't completely happy with the way they had turned out anyway. Um, so I was kind of procrastinating slash trying to figure out a better way to do videos. I'm finally ready to start recording again and hopefully I can get back into a better schedule. Um, so I thought today, since I already have a broken foot, <laughs> um, in addition to talking about how that happened, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to share some other near-death experiences I've had because they've actually uh, been quite a lot in my life. I don't, I don't, I would say I don't know why, but actually I just, it's just because I put myself in a lot of danger all the time. Um, which sounds more badass than it actually is. <laughs> yeah, mostly I'm just stupid. I can't say for sure how many stories there are going to be in this video because sometimes a story sounds funny in my head and then when I actually talk about it and record it, it sounds really stupid and long-winded. So uh, I'm just going to share a few stories, everything from uh, choking in a car, shooting arrows, running into a parking meter, getting a sword cracked over my head, uh, cracking my head open, flipping off a horse, and alcohol poisoning. And um, if any of those sound interesting to you and I don't talk about them, let me know in the comments and uh, maybe I'll make another video about it. I definitely have enough stories to fill up videos of near-death experiences, so anyway, here we go. First things first, I'll quick go over how my foot got broken. Um, I don't know if I've talked about this before, but here in Michigan, I'm actually working as a horse trainer and riding instructor. I've been riding for 14 years, uh, English riding mostly, and I love it, but it comes with quite a lot of dangers, especially once you start training young and experienced horses. And that's exactly what happened. I got on a horse um, that I've ridden several times for weeks, uh, but I got on him bareback, so no saddle or whatever, and the horse freaked out and bucked. I got bucked off and landed funny on my foot and broke three bones. Um, so now I can't ride for like a month. And <laughs> it really sucks, to be honest. It, it doesn't really feel too bad right now. And it's kind of nice to have a steady supply of narcotics. <laughs> oh god, that makes me sound like a drug addict. I just mean, I don't know what I mean. They're really good for period cramps, okay? <laughs> Chapter one, death by seatbelt. So I'll start with choking in a car. Uh, in this experience, I was in a pretty full car. I was in the back seat. It was me and my brother, and then my mom and dad were in the front. And uh, you know how the cars have those seat belts that are like, like for the middle passenger, they're up on the top of the car, and so you pull the seat belt down and click it, and then like wrap it over yourself. So uh, we had one of those seat belts, and I thought to pass the time, it would be fun to wrap the seatbelt around myself instead of just clicking it in like a normal human being. And so I started to wrap the seatbelt around and I kind of wanted to see how many times I could do it. Uh, but the problem was that the seatbelt ended up locking itself. You know how seatbelts will lock themselves when they get like a strong pull or anything? It's meant for safety's sake. In this case, it almost killed me. Um, so the seatbelt locked and I still had like six inches of belt before the ceiling. So I thought, okay, I'll just let out those six inches and then the seat belt will pull back out and it'll be fine. So I let out the six inches by pushing my neck up into the top of the car and then <laughs> find out that, okay, the seat belt is still locked. So now I've got the seat belt around my neck like this and I've put myself way up on the top of the ceiling of the car like this with my neck pressed up there. So I keep trying to like slowly press my neck more and more into the ceiling of the car so that I can try to get the seat belt to loosen itself um, and it doesn't work at all and I'm actually starting to get choked where I like can't breathe. So I start uh, waving around my arms and my brother, keep in mind, is sitting right next to me. There's no clue what's going on, looking out the window, listening to music, whatever. And I'm just like, mom, mom. Uh, oh, please help! And she looks back and the look on her face it was like horror. And she was just like, Jeremy! It was my dad. Was like, Jeremy! Pull the car over! Pull it over now! And my dad was like, what? What? She was like, pull the car over! Her daughter is dying in the back 
crazy. So he pulls over on the side of the highway and they end up, you know, undoing the seatbelt and getting me out. And I wasn't able to undo the seatbelt myself because my arms were too high up. Like I couldn't reach the seatbelt anymore. Chapter two, death by my father. In this house, we had a coffee table, like a lot of other houses. And um, at the time, I was small enough to fit under the coffee table. So I was hiding under there watching my brother and my dad play with these big plastic swords. And the swords were really like large, legitimate, you know, heavy plastic with all the really detailed sculptures on it, like the big um, skull right here at the base of the handle, holding on to like this claw that holds onto this ruby thing, and you know, this intense kind of demon sword. Uh, uh, my dad was holding that one, and then my brother was holding another large sword. Uh, and growing up, we did a lot of sword fighting for fun, so it wasn't really that unusual for us to be sword fighting in the living room. And at one point, my dad told my brother, he was like, alright, check this out. Oh, and he like swung the sword around and all as, as fast as he could was like whoosh like this almost like a baseball bat and he didn't notice that the sword swept under the coffee table and completely nailed me right across the head and actually it hit me so hard the sword itself snapped in half and half the sword went flying across the room and then you know I was basically sprawled out under the coffee table and my dad immediately was like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And my brother was just like, my son! Chapter 3, Death by Hot Dog. My last story has to do with eating a hot dog, uh, which I feel like sounds silly, but I also feel like it's one of those things where probably a decent amount of people have almost choked to death on a hot dog. It's just one of those foods where it looks smaller than it actually is, I think. And so when you go to like, put it into your mouth, you end up shoving way more in than you're expecting to. Oh man, I just realized how phallic this story is going to sound. But anyway, so um, when I was younger, I had this almost obsession with making the last bite of every meal be like the very best bite I could make myself. So if it if it were a meal that had lots of different components that went well together, I would try to shove all those components onto one final ultimate bite and it would be like heaven. Um, so that's what I tried to do one day when I was totally alone at home and I made myself a hot dog and I, you know, lit, totally decked it out with relish and ketchup and mustard and um, made sort of this like king hot dog. Um, with a nice toasted bun and like a you know a thick like sausagey dog. <laughs> um, anyway, and so the last bite of this hot dog had all this stuff on it, and I instead of trying to like split the end of the hot dog in half and just eat one side by itself, I just basically shoved the entire last end of the hot dog into my mouth and was like, this is gonna be the perfect bite. In reality, as soon as I had that dog in my mouth, I realized that it was uh, just way too big of a bite. <laughs> and that I couldn't actually chew that well because my mouth was so full. And so I realized that without being able to chew, I wouldn't really be able to like make the bite any smaller. And I also see it was too big to spit out. And so there was this moment of sort of desperate but also completely um, self-loathing <laughs> realization where I thought this is how I'm gonna die. I'm going to die alone in my house eating a freaking hot dog. Like people are gonna find me here dead with the hot dog in my mouth and they're gonna know that that's how I died and it's gonna be so embarrassing. Like can you imagine going to a funeral of someone who died by a hot dog? Maybe some of you have. I just, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be the person who died via hot dog. That sounds freaking terrible. So, anyway, it, it became sort of a weird mission in that moment. You know, like, survival of the fittest kicked in. And me trying to swallow huge chunks of hot dog down my throat, trying to clear the airway. And in the end, I succeeded. It was a very painful experience and wasn't at all the delightful bite that I had hoped for. But at the very least, I did not die 
by hot dog. So I'm really glad that I avoided that fate because that would have just been the worst. Um, or not the worst, but you know, really embarrassing. <laughs> so those are some of my near-death experiences. I feel like most of them are sort of silly and not badass or cool at all. <laughs> But, uh, they're mine, they're my weird, kooky life experiences, and, um, I don't know, I, I hope that I've been, if something has kept me here, I hope it's kept me here for a higher reason than just to die by some other phallic food, um, so, yeah, uh, thanks for joining me guys, and I hope I'll see you again next week, bye! Oh, no, no, no.